Let us pray. God, I pray inspiration for the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts, that they will be acceptable in your sight. Amen. I know not everybody reads the Key West Citizen, but in the Citizen, they've been running two diaries. And one of the diary entries is from May Johnson, who was writing in 1896. Uh, she was a 20-year-old single teacher. And one of the things that she does at the end of every day is she sums up the day with a word describing how she feels about that day. Uh, something like kicking or botheration. So recently in the paper, Mary Haffenrafer published a May's moodometer. And it's got a list of all of May's moods, and I want to share them with you from the most positive to the most negative. Out of sight, glorious, grand, splendid, excellent, delightful, killing, kicking, ha-ha, happy, lovely, fine, pleasant, as usual, so-so, relieved, bored to death, slow, tired, worried, sad, blue, longing, lonely, sorrowful, dissatisfied, discontented, disappointed, put out, botheration, provoked, cussing, D slash slash, she was a nice school teacher and she did not cuss, but she gave us the first letter, D mad, serious mad, and last, lost. So on the days when May was feeling lost or sorrowful or disappointed, those are the days that we would think would lead themselves to what the scriptures in the book of Psalms have as the laments. The Psalms of lament are the most common of all the Psalms in the Hebrew Bible. They're communal laments when things are not going well for the city or not going well for the nation. And they're personal laments about some kind of trouble that is happening in someone's personal life, an illness, or a death of a loved one, or the sudden um, emer immersion of poverty. In those kind of situations, people cry out to God. Now, I suspect that's probably still why most people pray. Most of us probably pray most often when things are not going well. And that's just a natural human inclination. We want help with something. We, we are seeking a higher power when things are not going well and we need some direction and some help from God. There's a pattern to these laments, a formula, so to speak. And they, they start in one way, they go through a certain kind of outline and pattern. And this morning I'm gonna simplify that pattern and give you, I hope, a way to remember it. At least it's a way for me to remember it. So when you are in the midst of a problem of some kind and you want to pray, this is a really good outline to use. So my little acronym is GPWT. So you remember it with go, pray, with, trust. Go, pray, with, trust. G, P, W, T. So what does the G stand for? Well, the G stands for God. You start your prayer with God. You talk about who it is that you are reaching out to. And in the Psalms, when God is called on, it's not kind of a superficial, hey God, here I am, and then dive right in. It's much deeper than that. I want to give you an example, and this one comes from Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2. 
Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Okay, that's a substantial way to start a prayer. That is not just a jump right in. That is a setting the foundation because when you're going to talk to God about a problem, you want to make clear that you're talking to the God who knows the course of every planet in the universe. That's a good one to go to with your problems. When Jesus is teaching us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer, he starts it with, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, Heavenly Father, God who is my Abba, the Father to whom I go to, the one that I am in close relationship with, holy is your name. God above all of heaven and earth. It sets a foundation for our prayer, and it already starts to put in context what the lament is going to be about, what the problem is going to be, because God is big. And when we start our prayer with that description of God, with that understanding of who it is that we're talking to, already our problem starts to look a little smaller than it did before we addressed our prayer to God. So G, go, stands for God. And that's where you start your lament. Second is pray. And this is where you tell God what the problem is. You share the problem. Now, In communal laments, this can be about a natural disaster. It can be about a national crisis. It can be about uh, famine, about, uh, you know, the lack of water, some natural disaster that's befallen the entire land. And everybody is addressing God with a communal lament. Or, as is most often in the book of Psalms, it's a personal lament. It's something that's happened to you personally. Maybe you got a phone call from a friend who told you that they have stage four cancer. Maybe there's a really difficult problem in your family. Maybe you are struggling with a physical illness. So you describe that problem. And when you describe the problem, you do that in some detail. Now, it may feel like at this stage of the prayer, you're doing a lot of whining and complaining, which I guess in a way we are, but it's really naming the problem. And so often what happens when we name the problem is it's not just the superficial problem, but as we talk about the problem, we realize there's some other problems underneath. An example from the book of Psalms about a communal lament in which the psalmist is talking about a problem in the nation describes it in vivid detail. This is in Psalm 74, verses 4 through 8. Your foes have roared within your holy place. They set up their emblems there. At the upper entrance, they hacked the wooden trellis with axes and then... With hatchets and hammers, they smashed all its carved work. They set your sanctuary on fire. They desecrated the dwelling place of your name, bringing it to the ground. They said to themselves, we will utterly subdue them. They burned all the meeting places of God in the land. This communal lament is about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, the holiest place for the people where they worshiped God, where they met together. And the destruction of the beautiful temple of Solomon was a cause of many laments. It was a deeply sorrowful experience. I, I read this part of the Hebrew Bible, and in my mind I picture Coventry Cathedral that I visited when I was England, in England. They, they kept the bombed out cathedral and built the new one next to it. So you can walk into these very few remains of this beautiful cathedral that was bombed in World War II. And you get the, the sense of the destruction and 
the tragedy. I imagine in our own land, it would be like the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., just sitting in a pile of rubble, or all the monuments in our land that we hold dear, just totally destroyed. And they cried out to God. They cried out to God not only the problem of the destruction, but of what that destruction signified. So when we share our laments, when we go pray with trust, when we talk to God and we describe our problem, whether it's a personal problem or it's a communal problem, a problem with our nation or a problem in Key West or a problem in our family or something in our own lives, we describe it in a way that helps us to feel like we have truly named the problem. Go pray, start with God, describe the problem with. Now this is the most fascinating part to me of the outline of laments because the W stands for why. And the pattern in the laments is you tell God what the problem is and then you tell God why you want God to solve the problem, why you want God to help, why you want deliverance. Now, this seems like it would be obvious, right? I mean, like I'm sick and I want to be well. Why do I want to be well? Because sickness stinks and, you know, being well is a whole lot better. But what's so fascinating about this is that the why, the why question and the way that it gets answered in the laments is, is very unique, I think, for the way we would normally think about praying and asking God for help. Lis listen to this why, the answer to why in Psalm 6, verses 4 and 5. Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who can give you praise? So when the psalmist is asking for healing, and this is a lament for personal illness, when, when the psalmist is answering the why question, the psalmist is saying, because you're a loving God, help me because of your steadfast love, because this is who you are. So often in the Psalms, we, we see at this point in the prayer, for the sake of your name, which means so I can testify to you, so I can tell people of your goodness, so I can share with people the answer to my prayer. For your sake, oh God, for your name, because of your steadfast love, so that I can worship you, so that I can praise you, so that I can serve my neighbor, so that I can pick up my responsibilities again, so that in a communal lament, so that we can be again a city set on a hill that is a light to the nations. The why as a part of our prayer, puts the context beyond just because I have a problem and I want a solution. There's a lot bigger reason why we want the liberation and the deliverance and the help of God, so we can serve God, so we can love our neighbors, so we can testify to the steadfast love of God. Go, God, pray, problem, with, why, trust. Go pray with trust. Now, the Psalms of Lament end with an affirmation of faith. They end with, they start with God and they end with God. And when they, when they end, it's like, here is my problem, here's why I want help with my problem, and before I say amen, I want to go on the record to say that I trust you. I trust your goodness, I trust your mercy, I trust your steadfast love, I trust you, God. One of the most famous would be the 22nd Psalm. This was one, while you might not know the number, almost everybody knows the words that start the 22nd Psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's a personal lament, and of course, it's the one that Jesus shared from the cross. And probably when Jesus shared those words, he was 
giving an indication that his prayer of lament from the cross was the whole 22nd Psalm, not just the first two verses, but the whole thing. And it, it starts and it continues with a description of the problem. But then listen to these verses, Psalm 22, 27, and 28. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. That's the way we end a prayer of lament. We don't end it with our problems. We end it with an affirmation of faith that we trust God. I don't know this morning whether you have cause for lament, but maybe you're suffering with some kind of illness and you're feeling frail this morning. Maybe you have lost somebody dear to you and you're in a place of sorrow. Maybe you have a whole stack of bills and you don't know how you're going to pay them all. Or maybe what troubles you most this morning is not something personal, but something related to our community or to our nation. If you are in that kind of place in your soul, and all of us will be there at some point, I really want to urge you to remember these four words, go pray with trust. And use the pattern of the Psalms. Use this way of addressing God in lament. G, go, God. Describe the God to whom you're lifting up your prayer. P, prayer, problem. State the problem, name what it is that's troubling you. With W, why? Why do you want the help of God? And T, trust. Go pray with trust. Let us pray. God, I lift up the prayers of lament those that are personal, and those that are communal. We acknowledge that you are the Almighty, the most merciful. You are our Heavenly Father, and your name is Holy. And we pray that our problems in our own lives, our problems in our community and our nation and our world, that all these problems will find help from your guidance, from your powerful spirit, so that we can praise you, tell of your goodness, and serve our neighbors. And today and every day, we will affirm our faith in you. We trust you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.